I come from Burundi, one of the world's smallest and poorest nations. Uh, my mother was a tradition beer maker and my father was a businessman. Now, Burundi had been recolonized by the Belgians after the Germans. And then um, what happened was that they introduced the um, separation between the ethnic groups of Hutus, Tutsis, and Twas. We gained our independence in uh, 1962, and since then, Burundi has been having ongoing conflicts. Um, the civil war broke out in Burundi in 1993, when I was two years old, which made almost half population of Burundians fleeing to the neighboring country. Now, me and my family, we escaped differently. I was with my older sister and my, um, and my mother, not knowing where my father and other siblings are, we escaped to the chapel. And then the next, month, uh, the next day, we were asked to go back thinking that things had settled. Now we returned home, and then um, soldiers approached our house and roughly asked my mother where everybody are, and she pretended that she, she didn't know what was going on, and she just returned from the main city where she took food for my father. So the soldiers remained by, and she gave them all they needed to eat and drink, until the night was approaching. Now, one of the soldiers who became my, uh, sort of my hero came up to my mother and whispered to her and say, you should leave now. And she realized that that things was going to get worse. Therefore, she put me on the back, took a bucket, and gave my older sister another bucket, and we pretended that we're going to the water bank to get water that we shall return. So that was, that was our way out, and after about um, 10 minutes, we started hitting great shooting from where we were. Now, we crossed the border to Rwanda refugee camp, and after four months of searching, finally, my family came back together. But we walked into another conflict. We walked into another war. One of the world's greatest uh, uh, killing, hu human killing ever captured in history, the Rwandan massacre which made us again flee again from a uh, from, uh, Rwanda uh, refugee camp to Burundi where there was a civil war. So we returned to Burundi. However, my older sister would, couldn't go back with us because her life was already being threatened. Therefore, she had to escape to Tanzania refugee camp. So we went back to Burundi, and with a little bit of uh, education from my parents' heart, and a little bit of uh, financial support they had, we could start again pretty much from zero because we even had to go to a different state from where we were before the war. And then also, it was pretty much like starting from nothing to, to something. I, I praise the Lord for the parents I had thinking about it right now. So what it is, we went back on track. And um, when I was eight years old, all my parents were uh, both killed and for me, this is where it started getting harder because they were both Hutus and, Hutu and Tutsi. So for me, I felt like I'm a kid who don't know where I'm falling. I felt like Burundi was rejecting me on, on these moments. And as I mentioned before, one, Burundi is one of the world's smallest country. So being an orphan in Burundi, in a third world country, was a very great challenge. However, before the death of my parents, they used to get us two to three hours before we go to bed them teaching us how to love and serve God, them teaching us about um, the importance of school and also human value. One that I remember the most was that God want us to treat one another in the way we would want to be treated. So I grew up understanding three things. Um, the Lord, education, and how to be humane. So I remained by, with school being my routine, when I was 11 years old, I was at school and a truck full of soldiers pulled up at my school and asked all the tall boys to stand up. And I was kidnapped to become a child soldier. Now, if you ever seen a film called Blood and Diamond, you might have seen the situation of child soldiers in Africa. It's really hectic. For me, all this moment, I felt like I couldn't understand what was going on. And due to what my, due to what my parent has uh, taught me, everything I was facing was... Uh, was coming against what my parents has taught me. But I managed to stay with faith. What it is was that being in a, being in a military, we were, I was forced to shoot guns. I was uh, being abused from bigger boys. And what it is, Burundi is one of the world's smallest um, uh, nation. 
So it wasn't like where we take our flight to go to a different combat on a different nation, on a combat against different people. It was where we are against our, our own people. But after two weeks, I, uh, I escaped, and the way it happened was that I went to get the food with the bigger boys, and I realized there was a great chance of me running away, so I went behind the warehouse, and I ran and hid in the jungle for the whole night. The next morning, I approached a taxi man who agreed to drive me back and became my hero, actually. And the way it happened was that he believed me because he thought I was a drug dealer. In Burundi, about 40 to 60% of young people, they don't go to school. No, they don't, not because they don't want to, but because the, most of them, due to this conflict, they are fatherless, they are motherless. Therefore, they don't get a chance to go to school. So he drove me back, and um, my sister paid him, and for me, I felt like I was a pigeon out of cage. However, I couldn't go back to school again because I thought I would eventually get kidnapped. Therefore, I started putting myself into drugs, smoking, even sniffing petrol, which are great now. And with that school, in Burundi, what you need to understand is that in Burundi, if you don't go to school, you have very, very low chance of you succeeding in life. Therefore, your only alternative is to survive. And the way of doing that is either you pick up a gun or anywhere that leads you into violence. So I started living with great fear, thinking that I would get kidnapped again. But I kept on um, uh, having my faith. My sister, who was living in Tanzania refugee camp, she heard what was going on, told my other siblings to get me in Tanzania. I went in Tanzania refugee camp to join her, thinking that things was going to get better, but it got worse than I thought. Because in a refugee camp, again, if you've seen um, a documentary called Go Back Where You Come From, you might have seen the situation of refugees. In a refugee camp, there is conflict, there is diseases, there is anything that you would never want to experience in life. Pretty much, it's a place you would never, ever want to live in, especially when you are that young, 11 years old. In, our, in terms of education, they, you, we would go to a class um, that holds up to 40 students with only one teacher, but we would greatly get whipped if we get late at school. And the thing is that we couldn't quit. I mean, we wouldn't quit because we had a clear understanding of education because our parents would tell us that everything that has been happening, all the conflicts been happening was the lack of education. Therefore, I, we had a clear understanding of education. So it came to pass where Tanzania government made decision of taking all the refugees back. And then... Um, we, because we couldn't go back to Burundi, we were accepted by Australia but on a humanitarian visa. Now, my sister didn't know where Australia was. My nephews obviously didn't know who Australia was. So, but I knew a little bit about Australia. The only thing that I knew about Australia was a red skinny kangaroo I used to see on the matchbox. So when I heard that we were coming to Australia, I thought we was coming to take care of kangaroos. <laughs> and the other thing is that, Fear chased us all the way along because in a refugee camp, refugees who got rejected to come overseas, they started breaking rumors saying that white people eat black people. <laughs> and then what happened was that we said, you know what, let's take a risk. We would rather get eaten by white people than our own people, you know. <laughs> and the other thing was that, I mean, what, what, ten, what supposed to be our sort of great fear ended up being our freedom and success, because what it is, we took a risk. As you can imagine, the journey of Afri from Africa to Australia, it was an extraordinarily amazing. So we came all the way and pulled up at the airport, and there was a white man holding my sister's name. So I quickly told my sister, this is the man who's going to eat us. <laughs> but then we didn't have choice. We went to him, and he drove us from the airport to the hotel we was living in, about 60 minutes of that awkward moment, we made it, we made it and got there, and the next morning he brought an African guy who would speak a language to English, which was like seeing black Jesus in real life. <laughs> and then he started saying that we, we are access to everything which was, the, which was in there. And because in Burundi and in a refugee camp, we used to eat meats only on Christmas Day. So it was a, there was a big fridge. And I quickly asked him, when can you come and refill this fridge if we finish it? And he said, oh, give me a call in about one week or two weeks. We'll come and do it. But three hours after, it was clean. 
That's how hungry we was. And it was crazy because we was eating frozen pies and all that. I mean, it was that moment of, uh, you know, third world country meeting first world country. For us, it was more like swimming in the chocolate river. So we moved, we moved to a private rental house. And when we got there, I started observing how young people were is waiting for more, all this freshed up and all that. And I would have all these endless questions like, oh, this is good. Young people can go to work and make a little bit of money. And somebody heard me and said, no, 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 they're only going to school. So if there was anything that I ever wished was to go to school and, and wear a tie, because where I come from, only upper class get to wear, to wear a tie. So for me, that was my dream. So I started, in, uh, I started school doing English uh, uh, as a second language for about four months. And after that, and actually it was a challenge because what it is, there will be somebody, like in class, there wouldn't be anybody who will come and translate the language in my own language because the community of Burundians here in Victoria is really small. But other kids would have somebody who translate the language. So every time that I make a response, I would feel like they're being, um, they would laugh at me and I feel like they, they have been discriminated against, to me, against me, which was like, well, you know, that was the first, way, uh, third world country meeting, first world country. But what happened was that I, um, I was so keen to, to, to study because I had a clear understanding of power of education. I was so keen to study that I used to turn up to school two hours before the front gate opens. And the other thing was that, I mean, power of education has enabled me to communicate. Telling my story was my long-term coming dream. And for me, right now, I feel like my voice has been found. And the other thing is that, um, the other thing is that education helps you to understand who you are. Education helps you to, to know when to use your decision, to know when to make human decision. However, it's not just about education. It's about believing in yourself. I've used all the challenges that I've faced to be my strength, and that's what keeps me going. It's been said before, what doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. Now, when I go to this school, and talk about, I mean, especially schools in Australia and talk to these young people, I tell them, appreciate the fact that you go to school in peace and harmony because we don't get, we all, like, we don't get that, where I come from. And the other thing is that what we need to understand is that you are here because you believe in the spirit of justice. And I believe every young person deserves to go to school and get enough education. The only reason why my country keeps having uh, ongoing conflicts is because we don't get educated. And that starts with love. I'd like to leave you with thoughts, says, imagine if we loved one another as we loved money. And the other thing is that to everyone out there, don't ever underestimate yourself to think that you, can, you are the next person to change the world. We are the future. We are the world. We create the future. Yeah, I was born in a land that I never chose. Full of darkness, I found myself lost. But the light of peace has gave me the way. And this is what I found. This is what I found, uh, yeah, let's go. Gave me freedom, freedom, cheer. I will never see the kingdom, kingdom, yeah, light of peace. Gave me freedom, light of peace. Gave me freedom, I used to believe. I will never see the kingdom. Check it, uh. I was just 11 when I became a soldier. Bullets in my hands and a gun on my shoulder. Being a schoolboy, but being made to kill. I didn't like my life, but I just had to deal. Blood on my shoes and I fighting all day. Ducking all the bullets, the devil had his way. Every morning, my teeth made my pillow get damp. But I had no choice, it was war or camp. I believed in myself, I hoped and I prayed. Wish to see a light, hoping for a better day. But I'm laughing big time and my life is a wonder Cause I found freedom in a land down under Cause I found paradise in a land down under Gave me freedom, freedom, come on Yeah, 
I will never see the kingdom, kingdom, uh. Give me freedom, freedom, yeah. I will never see the kingdom. Check this one. Light of peace gave me freedom. I used to believe I would never see the king. But now I make a change and I never stop praying. People had a dream that Obama would change the US. Had a big dream and become a reality. Fight to Annabella, La Barenda, Pini Ghetto. I've tried many ways, homie, even in a hustle when the genocide came. Red Cox was a bustling. There wasn't many workers, so they were struggling. The leaders weren't strong. People find it troubling, who could ever know? I'm five years old, I thought it's so bold, I saw a ghetto, come on. Give me freedom, freedom, yeah. I will never see the kingdom, kingdom, come on. Give me freedom, freedom. I used to believe I would, uh, break it down right here. Uh, it's all we want, it's all we need, no time, freedom. I want everybody to put their two fingers up like this. If you believe in the peace, if you believe in the spirit of justice, freedom right here, wave it like this, uh, like this, light of peace. Give me freedom, freedom, yeah, I used to believe, uh, I would never see the king. Kingdom, yeah, light of peace. Come on, light of peace. Yeah, I used to believe, uh, I would never see the kingdom. Kingdom, yeah, light of peace. Give me freedom, freedom. I would never see the kingdom. Kingdom, uh, light of peace. Yeah, give me freedom. Check it. I would never see the kingdom. Kingdom. Thank you, Australia.